This hammer was made by a 3D printer. It works on the small nails, but what about all these other size nails? Can a 3D printed saw cut through wood or metal? Those are just a few questions that I want to find out because I printed every single 3D printed tool. Okay, not every single 3D printed tool, just the ones that I could find online. And I want to find out which ones are absolutely garbage. I'm not even going to try and justify its usefulness. What the hell is a ruler good for? What am I in the third grade? The thing is garbage. So for that, they're going in the garbage. And which ones actually work? This is better than what you would buy in the store. But before we can do that, we have to define our tier list. First, we have the S tier. S tier are any tools that will replace the existing tool, meaning the 3D printed tool is better than one you could find buying in the shop. A tier. A tier is gonna be all the tools that kinda work, B tier is gonna be other tools that are more of a novelty item. They don't really work, but if they're sitting around, you can show your friends to and be like, hey, watch this, even though it has no real practical use. The F tier. The garbage tool should be thrown out, never used again. Don't even show your friends because they're embarrassingly disgusting. But let's continue on with the hammer. So the 3D printed hammer failed miserably in my last video. The nail went right through the hammer and then eventually got stuck. But now I have an upgraded hammer that should work significantly better. But we're gonna move up to the other size nail, the slightly bigger one. That's in there. That is in there. Now we got the third tier nail. This one I'm worried about. It's a little thicker and it's a little longer. The hammer is still fully intact, so I don't have much to worry about. Okay, I'm gonna count that as a win for the hammer. The hammer, undamaged. The nail, damaged. It didn't really go in. I think the wood is just too strong, but this is the last strongest nail that I have. I'm guessing the same thing's going to happen here. So I'm just going to delicately hit this and we'll see if we have a different result. I, I, I don't, I don't have any words. I say that's a win for the hammer. If you're wondering why this hammer worked and the last one didn't. So I basically, I made this thing super dense by changing the infill or the amount of 3D print per layer all the way up to 100%. So this thing is just straight plastic and kind of destroyed the metals. And for that, I'm gonna put it at the top of A. Although it works really great on the nails, I'm worried long-term it wouldn't hold up. Eventually, I think the plastic would start to wear down. You can see like a little bit of scratch marks on there, but I think this is a great tool if you were looking for something quick and you're like, hey, let me use this thing. So the next tool we have is this C-clamp. If you don't know what a C-clamp is, it really just holds things together so you can do your work without having to worry about it slipping or anything moving on you. All right, so to test the functionality of this thing, I have a piece of wood with a hook in it. I'm gonna clamp down and use a suitcase wire to see how much weight this thing can support before slipping. That thing is locked in place. And now I'm just gonna pull and see how much this thing can support before falling out. Actually, I'll hold it to you to verify that it's slipping. Oh, it came right out. Let me see what you see. Do a little slow-mo test myself. Shit myself in the heart. Right at about 10 pounds, the thing starts to slip. For reference, even like little tops, the thing pops out. So if you were trying to hammer or drill or screw, thing wouldn't work. But there is one more thing I do want to test before giving up on it. I'll be right back. I have some frozen strawberries and blueberries, and I want to see how well this thing works as a hydraulic press. You know, you've seen those videos where things just get crushed. Oh, I'm covered in blueberry juice. So let's just clamp down to see how strong this thing is. Oh, gross. Uh. <laughs> All right, oh, it's stuck. Oh, gross. All right, what about blueberries? Yeah. Uh. 
kind of crushed them. I think there's too much strawberry juice on there. But for that, in B tier. It's a cool fiddling device where I could see myself just sitting at my desk, just twisting it and turning it, but I wouldn't clamp it or test anything with it or crush my fruit in this. This is disgusting. The next tool we have is scissors and I'm pretty excited to test these out. I mean, this is literally just plastic. And if this thing can cut, I would be genuinely impressed. Oh, can this cut my hair? Ow. I'm gonna try and see if I can press the two shears together to get any type of cut. Oh, sugar. That actually cut right through. Oh. Okay, I was still genuinely impressed with how well some of these cuts worked. Although they broke almost instantly, I feel like if I if I replace this plastic thing with metal, these things could actually work. This is gonna be a hot take, but I'm gonna put these scissors in F tier. Although they would be cool on a shelf, these things could be dangerous. Again, I think my friends are dumb enough to actually hurt themselves if these were just sitting on my shelves, so I wouldn't want to have these lying around. And I can't really show them off because I would make one cut and the things would come apart. So they're staying in F tier. Next up, we have the Allen keys. And if you're like me and you don't know who Allen is, these little hexagon tools that, you know, you sometimes you put in and you twist until something either falls off or is locked in place. And we have all the different tools we're gonna test, starting with this giant hex tool, going all the way down to this little itty bitty tiny tool. And to test this, I built this little rig that I can put in these bolts in the different size holes to see which of the different sizes work. But let's start off with the biggest bolt. The only thing that could happen is the tool breaking. Oh. The saw was bending a lot too. Snapped right in half. Look how tiny this little screw is here. Let's try and get this tiny one in and I'll show you exactly what I thought. All right, yeah, it's just spinning in place. Alan, don't be mad, I'm sorry. They're going back down in the F tier. Although they worked on the big one, most of the time, I think the thing's just gonna snap before the metal breaks loose. And I wouldn't put these in B tier because every time you're building furniture, they give you one of these things or one of these things and you just throw them in your toolbox until you have hundreds of these things just lying around. So I don't want any more clutter. So for that, they're going in the garbage. All right, next up we have the wrench and I'm excited for this thing because believe it or not, this thing actually spins and you can see it get shorter as I scroll it in. So I wanna test how well this wrench actually works at tightening. So I'm gonna put these pipes together and pour water in it to see, I guess, does it work? Does it spill? Although that's not the wrench's fault, but it doesn't matter, we're gonna do it anyway. Will it rotate in? Look at that. This adapter should make the most sense. So a normal use case, I would have some sort of hexagon thing and look at that, it twists, twists right in. It twists right up, oh yeah. I don't know if you saw that, but when it gets too tight, it kind of splits apart. I will say it did get it very tight, and then we'll do the same thing on this one, where we'll tighten the hex onto the rod, get it to the right length, and then we'll just spin this thing right in there. I can just do it faster like this. But now I have some sort of pipe. And look at that. I can also use this as a kickstand. Okay. We'll pour some water in here to see if it made it leak proof. Pour some in here. Sugar. Where did that go? Hey, it's leak proof. Oh no. Don't fall on the ground. Don't fall on the ground. Okay, for the wrench, 
I think it's cool. This thing actually opens and closes, gets a little scuffed up on the insides there. And for that, I'm gonna give the wrench a B. The reason I'm giving the wrench a B is because I think if someone picks it up on my desk, they're gonna think it's cool, but I can't see this thing working on like lug nuts or anything you would need it to. I think this thing is a cool toy for a kid. Next we have the paintbrush and I'm super excited to test this thing because these bristles are pretty strong. You're probably wondering, what am I gonna paint? Picasso, a Don Cesar, that's not a thing. I will be painting this. Uh, let's see how this works. So the first color I need is dark green. Uh, dark green up here, okay. This thing is not terrible. It's staying inside the lines. I like this thing. I'm noticing it's a little firm. I'm not getting very even brush strokes. And look at that. That is a beautiful drawing. As for the paintbrushes, I mean, the paintbrushes speak for themselves. You saw the work it does. And I know it does look a lot like a toothbrush and you probably wanna know, does it work? And the answer is yes, it works. The paintbrush toothbrushes, I'm putting in A tier. A little controversial, but these things actually kind of work. If you really needed a paintbrush and were in a pickle, I would print one of these. Yeah, it wouldn't be that smooth, but if you truly needed a paintbrush, these things aren't bad. Next item we have is a screwdriver. I have this goaded microphone, the Blue Yeti, and I'm gonna try and unscrew these screws. No, I'm not, they don't even fit. I gotta find something else, so I will be right back. <laughs> All right, I got my catapult that destroyed the 3D printer in my last video. We're gonna see if this thing can unscrew screws. Nope, it doesn't work. The tip right there isn't strong enough. Not much left to say, given the screwdriver, F tier. It's just not cool enough to have on my shelf. So for that, it's gonna stay in F tier. The next tool we have is a ratchet designed by the National ASA. I'm excited to use this tool because it makes probably the best sound in the world. You know, this one. So what I have is just a long bolt with a hole and I'm gonna use this as a ratchet to So you're probably thinking, oh, this thing works, S tier, right? Wrong, thing is garbage. Doesn't even make anything remotely similar to the sound. Dead silent, I don't care if it works perfectly. I don't care if NASA made it. NASA, more like NASA, yeah. The next tool we have is a ruler, and you're probably thinking, what the hell is a ruler good for? What am I in the third grade? You're absolutely right, ruler schmuller. What is useful is this thing called a speed square. If you're like me and you've never used a speed square before and had to watch a video on how to use a speed square, let me show you what you can do. I need a straight edge and I go, oh, a one inch cut there, I want to make a 45 degree angle, 15 degrees, I can do that too. Oh, you got a weird angle that needs 15 degrees, and you draw 15 degrees. Basically, you use the speed square, make all your measurings, and then when you're ready to cut with one of those big boy saws, I've never used one of these things before after printing it and watching a video. Lifesaver. And for that, we have our first S tier tool. That's right, S tier. This thing, I can add any design, make it any color I want. Personally, this is better than what you would buy in the store, which is why we got our first S tier tool. The next tool I'm testing is going to be this saw. It was supposed to be significantly longer, but my 3D printer is only this big. I'm gonna put this saw through four levels of testing. Styrofoam, paper, wood, metal. Sawing level one through styrofoam. Okay, so I tried to go straight down, but the saw just kind of took its own path and went down to the right. So if I was actually cutting this, I'd be pissed. 
don't even know if you can see that. Level two, we have paper. It's basically one piece of construction paper folded up. What is that? Six times, so probably like six pieces of construction paper. So it's cutting through the paper. The paper is just too fragile. I would say it can definitely cut through paper. So I'm gonna give it a half pass through the paper one. But here's where it gets tricky. Now we have about one centimeter or a quarter of an inch thickness. Let's see if we can cut through the wood. I think if I stay here long enough, I'll definitely, oh no, I won't. It's completely destroying the things. Yeah, it's completely fraying. And for that, I'm gonna give the saw B tier. It's a solid B tier. I mean, it cut through the styrofoam, albeit crooked, can cut through paper, can smoothen edges. This is a cool thing that I would want to farther explore. I wonder if I use like a metal filament, it could do a little bit better. But I think this is a cool thing that, nah, I'm not even gonna try and justify its usefulness. This thing is just gonna sit on my shelf and I think it's kinda cool. And this is our tier list. You have the speed square that I'm gonna keep. Everything else, kind of garbage. Don't know what I'm gonna do with it. There wasn't a real point to this video. I just got a new 3D printer and I wanted to play with it. That's about it. I mean, I could make up a lesson, something like a real tool inside each tool. No, that's stupid. Stupid, I got nothing. It's a pointless video.